So I want to make a quick video about the Rogue Bender and the Harbor Freight Tube Notcher. Just real quickly want to touch base on some of the key factors and reasons why I like and dislike both of them. Um, and also reasons why financially they were great options for what my plan was. Um, I built this table just recently out of half inch plate steel <clears throat> the top is and uh, it definitely has helped obviously as you can see it's holding the rear axle to the LJ the bender a pretty nice heavy stout vise there with the tube notcher on it um, <clears throat> it's had a lot more weight than this over the past couple days with all this build but anyways uh, you need you a good, strong, steady, stable base, whatever you're going to work off of. And the Rogue Bender is a great bender. Um, it, it works for me. I can't say that I'm unsatisfied with it, but it doesn't quite bend the way I wanted it to. Um, <clears throat> it's putting a bit of a flat back on the tube tried a couple options talked to rogue tried to see what uh what sort of options were available to eliminate that um i have the extreme heavy duty setup <clears throat> so i have the the upgraded center pin and the bigger um round pieces i guess whatever you want to call them uh and i also have roller dies rather than feed through dies this roller here is for the heavy duty setup so you can add a second roller there's a roller here and a roller that goes back here which is the one that was just over on the other side uh, it this roller takes some load off of this roller <clears throat> so you can bend I believe up to two and a half inch solid solid bar I don't really know that I plan on doing it, but I didn't want to ever be limited options. So I went with the extreme heavy duty. Anyways, there's a thin wall tubing uh, kit that you can add to these. I don't know a whole lot about them, so I'm not even gonna expound on that just yet. This is my old steel DOM, just your basic everyday cold roll DOM. <clears throat> and over here in my little scrap pile are some of the bins that I did on some chromoly 4130 dom and it is 095 wall it is inch and three quarter but it is a thinner wall than the 120 obviously uh, that being said it did a few things to me i didn't expect these are my first couple bins uh with the bender when i first got it set up <clears throat> so this was my first bend having the second roller in the bender that I was just showing you it's snake bellied what I like to call it there in the middle you can see some pretty bad wrinkle there and some of the markings that was left on it uh, you definitely don't want to have that second roller in there if you're trying to bend thin wall tubing this is apparently thin wall tubing anything under 120 wall is considered thin wall at the inch and three quarter size for the rogue bender it also put this flat backing in it <clears throat> and this bend I took the second roller out and I at least eliminated the snake belly on the inside I still had the pretty bad flat backside as you can see there so uh, I'm not happy with the fact that the chromoly tubing cannot be bent in the rogue bender as well uh, and the reason I say that is because this Jeep right here was built with a JD squared bender and all of the bins it's been used and abused but all the bins in this Jeep in the cage uh, none of them have any sort of flat backside to the tubing they all retained almost perfect roundness to the tube, <clears throat> whereas the JD squared, or I'm sorry, the rope bender put a lot of flat, flat deflection on the outside of the tube. So 
This roll cage was bent, built with a JD squared bender. I did this one about, uh, the front section was about two years ago. This back section was just this past winter. And uh, so far I've had zero issues with it. <clears throat> and it's a little bit of a mix of chrome ollie, 4130, one and three quarter, uh, 095 wall, and also cold rolled, mild, one and three quarter, 120 wall. So, Kind of have a mix of stuff in there but anyways this setup was done with the jd squared and i was very pleased with the versatility of both tubing being able to be bent on the jd squared without changing any sort of dies or adding any sort of extra stuff so that's the downfall that i would have to say is the least satisfying with this rogue bender <clears throat> to bend 4130 chrome ollie seems that I have to modify it in some way or another spend more money this is a Harbor Freight Ram uh, it's I think to my knowledge it's the only way that you can bend with the rope bender the JD squared offers the mechanical version uh, it's the cheapest base version of it and definitely was more suitable for the uh, the budget friendly people uh, I would definitely have to say that it was worth the money um, <clears throat> that being said the rogue bender so far has worked well for me other than the flat back side of the tubing uh, as you can see over here there isn't a whole lot of flatness to the back of the tube now that I've got it figured out now that I've got it dialed in a little better it actually turns out pretty good so I'm pleased overall now that it's working correctly so that is the bumper I'm working on with this rogue bender lights are flickering getting pretty windy out <clears throat> Hope this helps. Hope this kind of gives you a little bit more info on it all. I'll make some more videos about the welder setup here in the future and some of my other tooling options and back to the Harbor Freight tube notcher. Alrighty, let's talk about the Harbor Freight tube notcher. This hole saw is a Linux hole saw as you can see. It does not come with the tube notcher. This is not an option from our freight I bought this from Lowe's <clears throat> it's about 12 bucks Milwaukee makes them they're about 10 bucks uh, this is a one and three quarter inch hole saw and it perfectly drills out um, notches in tubing that's the back side of a notch that I worked on a little bit ago um, I'll show you some good notches with it here a little bit later Anyways, it comes with this bracket here to mount to a, got to take it out of the vise to show you. That was a good catch. It mounts with those two holes right there and here to a drill press. So if you want, you can use a drill press with this bracket. However, I didn't want to use a drill press. I don't own one. And I kind of like the idea of the hand control uh, speed variations with the Milwaukee drill that I have. So, anyways, uh, one option about the Harbor Freight tube notcher that I would say has been upgraded uh, is definitely the smoothness of the bearings. There are nice brass bearings in here. Uh, you can kind of see there. Definitely need to grease everything. Make sure everything stays good and greased. <clears throat> uh, you can put a grease fitting in if you need to, if you want to. Um, I'm all right with just greasing it for now. The tube clamp is a little bit on the flimsy side, but it, or at least I thought it was going to be. It worked really well. Um, you got a degree marker over here, degree ruler, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> there are three bolts here on the bottom side that you loosen up 
and it slides just nicely in its little grooves here that are machined out. <clears throat> Pretty self-explanatory right out of the box. 9 16 wrench gets the bolts loose on the bottom. Just loosen them up enough to where you can get it to move. Maybe a little looser there. Um, but that way you can set your uh, clamp set up here to whatever degree you want. So if you want it 20 degrees, that's about 20 degrees right there. It's kind of hard to see. Lighting's deceiving there, but there you go. There's about 20 degrees. <clears throat> so that way you can set whatever angle you want and tighten her down. Once you get it tightened down, set your tube in there if I can get the wrench out <clears throat> tighten her down put your tube in there just don't grab the piece real quick here slide your tube in the end use your little t-handle here to thread it down <clears throat> and now you're ready to start hole sawing. And that is how you're going to make your notch, or some people call them copes, uh, to notch your one and three quarter inch tubing. This is 120 wall. So you can see it's about the same size as the hole saw, and it makes a beautiful notch in the tubing, which I've got an example of over here. So this notch here was done with this hole saw and this that was a zero degree uh, notch and this is a 45 degree notch worked out perfectly so hope this helps this Harbor Freight bend, uh, notcher I'm sorry was about I think $65 the hole saw was about $12 so for less than 80 bucks, you got a great little notching setup. I used to do everything with a grinder, grinding wheel, cutoff wheel, flap wheel, whatever I could do to make the job happen. These are flap wheels. For those of you that don't know, here's a cutoff wheel. I used, pretty well used one. Um, for those of you that are new to this, you can get $80 in the notcher. This is the Rogue Bender, the... Uh, Rogue Fabrications vendor. It's a great vendor, but for the money I spent on it, I'm not necessarily pleased with it just yet. It is easy to use. I will at least give it that. Um, <clears throat> however, it was pretty pricey, but I went with the extreme heavy duty. So they've got lower grade, lower levels of this vendor that aren't as expensive, but they are good options for the money. And, um, Anyways, for less than $1,000, I guess you could say, you could have a notcher and a bender. This particular one I spent about $1,500 on, but the uh, lower level ones are about 1000 So, uh, with dies <clears throat> and the Harbor Freight Ram there at the end. Um, so, for about $1,000, you can have a pretty decent little fabrication setup for bending and notching tubing. There's that, and I hope that helps, guys. We'll see you later.